Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I will talk about the lightning locker. Uh, let me make, maximize this uh, PowerPoint. Um, so I won't be uh, demonstrating uh, this information using code because um, there's nothing to demonstrate using a code, right? So this is just a, um, a security aspect which I wanted to touch because it's important if you are an LWC developer. Um, the reason why I'm saying is that this functionality has been introduced um, <clears throat> and given us a default uh, functionality to every LWC component you're going to create uh, after API version 36 and above, right? So what that means is that if you have an LWC component that's created, say, in, in, in an API version of 32, it will not have uh, the Lightning Locker functionality inbuilt. So it is a security architecture that uh, Salesforce introduced uh, to every LWC component. Okay, now you that's one thing, right? So like I said, in a, in a very simple term, it's a security feature, right? Now, why do we need to use it, right? What's the what's the big deal about the Lightning Locker, right? Why we so much, why we wanted to talk about it because. Um, the Lightning Locker, the main advantage, what I can see, right, it's just to prevent the components from accessing and modifying other component data. So what that means is that if you are building a Lightning uh, web component, right, so that component will only have access to its own DOM. It will not have access to the DOM of other components and will not have the capability of leveraging, you know, uh, other DOM uh, resource. So that's the one of the things I can you know, one of the, the biggest advantage. So, but we're going to look at the advantage anyway. So, I'm going to uh, talk about some of the disadvantages and some of the things which you can do, right, uh, as a good security practice. So, that's all I'm going to talk about. Okay, so advantage, right? Yeah, the slide doesn't look very pretty, but my apologies for that. So, enhanced security, right? Obviously, like I said, um, it, it's, a, it's a robust security model, right? Because obviously, Salesforce is pretty much uh they are very serious about security right um so they wanted to make sure that anything you build using lwc is secure right obviously the last thing you want is that one component fiddling with another component uh data if it's a private data it's not really great stuff right so um so it says that you know lightning locker takes the security to the next level by adding an additional layer of security to your lwc component which exactly i mentioned by enforcing the secure virtual dorm um, Lightning Locker ensures that component can only access their own data. Just just now I mentioned this, right? And the data provided to them by the parent component. So this is a very uh, you know serious risk if your component is fiddling with the uh, uh, with the data of other components, right? Okay, so the better control, uh, Lightning Locker provides better control over access to your LWC components and its data, which is pretty obvious. This is pretty clear. Uh, this is important uh, if you're building application by using a shared environment. Uh, yeah, that's right. If you are having a shared uh, environment uh, or if your component needs to access the sensitive information, right? So this is pretty important in my opinion. So, and also the, the main thing is the uh, cross-site scripting, right? Uh, that is a biggest problem, I believe, right, for any web application or injection attacks. So Lightning Logger helps mitigate that kind of things, right? Um, so and also, you know, you know, right? We all know that right? sometimes developers write, you know, shy code, right? Let's accept the fact, right? I mean, I've written that. I mean, you might have written that in your, you know, early days. So. Right, even there are people who are starting out, right, with you know fresh um, grads or you know cadets or whatever you call, right. Uh, these days we have fancy terms depending upon the firm you're going to work for, right. So they sometimes end up in writing shy code. But I mean, I'm not blaming them, but because you know sometimes you know those people don't have a good mentor who can guide them, or even if they they're too busy, right, with their own project. So um, there is a potential risk of security vulnerability in your codes, right. So you know I can. Like, um, expose your code to injection attack. So certain things, uh, Locker will take care of it. Yeah. Uh, now compatibility is the biggest thing, right? Because obviously Salesforce releases uh, the new version, you know, three times a year. They add a new functionality. Um, so obviously, the you know, last thing you want is that your version of LWC is not compatible. So uh, with the Locker built-in, right? It's 
or like I said, right, it enforced strict security policy. Um, so your LWC component will be more likely compatible with all the future releases that's going to come in the future, right? Um, and also, you know, some companies are very picky about the compliance, right? Like, let's say you work for a bank or insurance uh, firm. They wanted to make sure that your component, right, have security standards like PSI, sorry, PCI, DSS, and HIPAA, right? So Lightning Locker can help you meet those requirements, so which is pretty good in my opinion, right? So, yeah. So these are the you know, some of the advantages, you know, I can think about, right? And I believe that uh, pretty good advantage to know. At the same time, we have some drawbacks as well. So like I said, the limited access could be a challenge under certain scenarios. Uh, complexity, yes, complexity. I mean, this is behind the scene complexity, not the complexity you're going to do when you're going to write a code. It's not talking about that. It's saying the lighting locker into additional complexity to the development process. Components are compliant with the security policies, right? Um, compatibility issues. It could be a compatibility issue, not with the sales for release, but if you're using a third party libraries, right? Um, for say for a chart or you know for something else for PDF generation or you know for whatever right you're using a third-party JavaScript library so it might be the case that it might you know started to act weird uh, because of the compatibility issue so that's something you need to watch out right so that's the reason why I said that this topic is important right even though you think hey why do I care right because it's inbuilt for chart it is inbuilt but you might have a component that is built um, let's say on version 32 and you decide to migrate to say 56 right and then you then you start seeing a lot of issues with the third-party library so this could be one of the reason right so just keep that into consideration performance overhead so the performance overhead um, yeah there could be a tiny performance overhead though you can't really notice if you're dealing with the low volume of data but if you're dealing with large data volume and a very super complex application, you might see here in the glitch, right? That's just a case by case. So you will have to troubleshoot based on, you know, the large volume data, data skew, a lot of things, right? So it's not the case that the, the data, uh, sorry, the lightning locker will introduce the massive bottleneck to your performance. No, that's not what it's meant. It means that you could have a performance issue due to various factors, how the way your components are designed, um, the way your you know data is handled, right? Different things you need to factor it. Okay, all right. So some of the things I just wanted to talk about is the you know you might have heard about the JavaScript uh, strict mode enforcement, right? So you have an option called use strict, right? If you're you if you if you use JavaScript a lot, you will know, right? So uh, so that what that will do is that right? This script mode will make sure your code is more secure, robust, and uh, right. So when the strict mode is uh, enabled, right, uh, if you try to do any kind of unsafe actions, right, uh, JavaScript will ultimately throw an error. And so, <clears throat> yeah. So for instance, uh, you know, you have an unsafe action that includes assigning value to non-writable properties and then using that variable that has been declared. So these kind of things can cause an issue if you use strict, right? Um, so Lightning Locker implicitly enable JavaScript uh, strict mode everywhere, okay? So you don't have to write use strict in your code because, like I said, out-of-box functionality you will get uh, when you are trying to build LWC with this, with Lightning um, Locker enabled. Yeah, I think that is a pretty uh, good, right? Now we have something called DOM uh, access containment, right? So with Locker, right, your component can only traverse the DOM, right, and access element that is created. So the reason why they wanted to do this, you know, there are a lot of <clears throat> anti-patterns in LWC, right? Accessing a DOM, which is not a part of, which you shouldn't be accessing it, is an anti-pattern, right? So it kind of prevents it, right? So, and using LWC, right, you can't use uh, something called Windows or document global properties, right? If you wanted to query, so you can't query a Docker component. That's, you know, if you're using uh, a regular, you know, JavaScript, right? A vanilla JavaScript, you can use, you know, the DOM.query selector to query a DOM. But in LWC, you can't. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to use template.query selector. 
right? As you can see that if you're building an LWC, you would have seen, right? You build a component and in the component, you will have HTML file and everything is start with the template, right? So if you wanted to query, you have to use the query dot um, uh, selector. That's one thing you have to, uh, and also there's uh, certain things I just wanted to talk about that is, um, uh, you know, the secure wrappers, right? Which is a pretty important topic uh, because, you know, there are certain things you can't access directly like Windows, right? For Windows, you they call it a secure Windows. Uh, and then for uh, documents, uh, they have something called secure document. There is a uh, locker API viewer using which you can see which of the wrappers are supported. So what I'll do, uh, okay, let, let it lower, right? So in the meantime, it's my Ubuntu is, is shite. <laughs> Because it's an older version of Ubuntu, so it's almost dying. So I might need an upgrade of the computer or upgrade of the version. So it takes some time. But anyways, that's besides the point. So I will do lockers API viewer, right? So we'll take you to somewhere. Okay, locker API viewer. So this is a very important uh, place uh, to view uh, the things Windows uh, versus security compatibility, right? You can see what are the things that's comp so there are a lot of stuff, right? Which is if you wanted to use Windows uh, object, right? So you get a lot of options, right? Like a board controller, you can't do that uh, using secure window, so it's not supported. Uh, but that being said, there are a few things that supported. Hang on a second, like add event listener that is version 46, alert is supported, right? So a lot of things you can do it, but. But if you are, like I said, if you wanted to, if you're someone, you know, who migrated to LWC, who was doing LWC first time and who had a lot of experience with vanilla JS, you just need to come and, you know, see the stuff here, right? It's not much different, right? It's pretty much JS code, but it's still good to know what is supported, what's not, right? Because it's it's custom built by Salesforce. The same goes with the secure document and secure, you know, element, that kind of stuff, right? So, but just pretty... Uh, so secure element is a wrapper for element object which represent various HTML elements, right? If you're wondering what that is. And secure document, obviously you would have used a document, right? It's a wrapper for the document object which represents a root uh, node of HTML document or page, right? That's pretty much it. Okay, now there's an eval function, E-V-A-L. Eval function is limited by Lightning Locker, right? Um, so, you know, normally you use eval function to work with the third party libraries, right? Which is often most, most of the time it's the case when you do with LWC. Um, now in lightning local, right? What happens is the use of eval function is supported to, it's supported so that you can work with third party libraries, uh, which can evaluate your code dynamically. But the one thing you have to keep into consideration though, all right, it is only limited to work only in the global scope of the namespace, right? It will not work with the local scope. So what that means is that if you have a local variable, so eval function can't access the local variable within the scope in which it is called. So just remember that. And the MIME types are permitted, right? So you can use application JSON, PDF, videos, audios, all kind of stuff, right? So that's, um, so the third party web components, you can't use it as you know, right? Because you must, if you've been a LWC developer, you will know that, right? Because the Salesforce takes security very seriously uh, to prevent the security risk. You can't use third party web components on the Salesforce platform. Right, and there are some of the the variables you can use. Like if you have used Aura, right? You have dollar A, dollar A. You can use Aura. You can use SDFC. You can use, uh, and there's one more. I can't remember uh, SF Force or something. Right, and uh, so yeah, and and there is a uh, one tool I would like to mention that Locker Console, which is a a pretty good tool, right? It is used to, you know, what this is a pretty a good option, right? Because what this will do is, right, you can check your JavaScript code compatibility with the Lightning Locker. If you have a JavaScript code, you just paste it here, evaluate it, right? And 
and compare it how it runs with the lightning locker enabled or disabled right so you can check it you can enable it disable it and then check it it depends upon the kind of code you have right if you wanted to use a third party uh, js code in your lwc for some of the uh, logic then you you know you can try it here to see if that really work with lwc uh, lightning lo locker right so you need to take security very seriously when you're working with lwc right although i do agree that salesforce makes the life super easier uh when it comes to you know web development because a lot of things you don't have to worry uh but that being said right it's a responsibility of a developer to make sure that the kind of code you write is compatible with the you know lightning locker so yeah that's pretty much i wanted to cover in today's episode i do understand this is a theory session but i thought you know i might as well cover it right because like i said you might have a component which is built a pretty old component which still works right but you decide to migrate to the latest api so you need to factor these things right because you know what might happen right you know maybe you have a chart component maybe you have say a pdf component or something else right it stopped working all of a sudden and you must be wondering mm, what's going on it could be a locker that's causing an issue right it could be the way eval is eval function is used right uh, different things you just need to test it out so yeah that's all i wanted to cover ladies and gentlemen hope you guys have amazing uh saturday adios